What's up guys? My name is Seth. You're watching Petrol360. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at solid state relays and why you should probably use them in your next build. Alright guys, so I'm working on the F100 and I'm starting to get to the finish line of wiring and I decided to make a change in the way we're going to finish the truck out. And that is, I'm going to be using this uh, solid state relay from Stinger. So I went online, there's a couple different brands that have these. MSD, which is from Holly, does have one of these, but there's particular reasons that I went with this one over the MSD. We'll get to those in a little bit. But you might be asking, to begin with, what is a solid state relay? So it is a solid state version of this right here. This is a standard automotive relay. So this one is a little bit different than most, but essentially what this is, is an electronic switch. So you use these in your car to switch on high power items. We're going to be using it to run our fans as well as a couple lights, um, things like that. So stuff that you don't want to have that much energy running into your cab. So I guess we'll start off with what you actually get in the box. This particular unit is a little bit cheaper than the MS MSD unit. The MSD retails for, I think, about $140 to $160. This one was right at $100. We didn't go with this one just because of price. So in the box, tells you what we have going on, um, some different things about it. Self-tappers, we're going to throw those things away. Obviously, instructions, and these go over a little bit. Um, these things are pretty simple to run. They, um, you know, you got power in, power out, and then all of your switches. So this is the relay block itself. This is a four channel. The reason we went with this particular model over the MSD was one of these channels, so channel one is a 30 amp channel. The others are 20 amp channels. The MSD, all of them are 20 amp channels. For our fan, we're running a pretty high power fan. It's going to draw a lot when it kicks on. So running it off the 30 amp will uh, keep it a little bit safer and make sure we're not cutting it off. Because there's two main advantages to using a solid state relay over a standard relay. A standard relay is a mechanical device. There is a little aperture in here that once it gets power or ground, it connects the switch. So that's a physical thing that's moving. So whenever you're diagnosing these things to go bad, a lot of times you'll listen for it to click. There's nothing mechanical in this. This is all just hard. This is all, excuse me, all wiring. So there's nothing that can go wrong. So I think Stinger itself as a company um, does a lot of stuff for the off-road, a lot of uh, desert racing, side-by-sides, things like that. And that's a huge advantage in those environments because there's so much shaking and vibration that could kill something like a standard relay, but a new um, solid state relay will last much longer and be much more reliable. So the other part of this, it has automatic built-in features to help for overcharging. So what this does, it is a circuit breaker as well. So this one, as you can see, our channel one, I don't know if you will read it or not, but it has a 40 amp thermal protected output. So essentially what this means is it's kind of got a built-in fuse. Uh, a fuse is there to prevent any kind of grounding and um, any surge draw or anything like that. It slows those down. This will do the same thing. It allows 30 amps regularly. Once it hits 40 amps, if you have a ground, uh, a wire ground out or anything like that, it's going to kill power to that particular one. And it also has indicator lights that are going to show you if you have any uh, surge protection or overvoltage protection. To draw you guys in a little bit closer here, it really lays out very simply on what all of these things do. On each side, you have your trigger wires. These are ground triggers. And on this side, these are positive triggers. So you've got one wire that you're going to run a chassis ground. Then you're going to run your main battery in then this is where all your power is going to go out to all your devices. So your fans, your uh, headlights, your water pump, anything like that. On this side, these are ground triggered. So if you want to switch one of these items on by grounding it, you use this side. Whereas if you want to switch it on with 12 volts, 
you use one of these panels. And the other awesome thing about this is this gives you the option to have two ways to turn a device on. So for our fans, for instance, we want to have those cut on by the ECU, which triggers the ground. But whenever we install AC in the car, we also want to turn on the entire time the AC is functioning. So from the AC unit, we can run 12 volt positive to trigger the fan on as well. That way, you know, you have two options to, to kick on any of your devices. All right, guys, and really that's going to be it for this video. This was super simple, quick, um, but I wanted to bring you guys along the ride for some of the swaps and showing off why we're changing out the products we're using. If you do want to try to get something like this, I've left some links down in the description to some of the items I used, or if you're just interested in the actual fuse box we were using before. Um, you know, just knowing the options that are available for you is half the battle of building cars and building anything in general. So hopefully this enlightens you guys and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.